Welcome to Medscape Morning Report. A new study suggests that maybe we should be treating patients with prediabetes with not just one, but three anti-diabetes drugs. In the STOP Diabetes trial, 81 prediabetes patients determined to be at high risk for progression of diabetes were treated with low-dose metformin, pioglitazone, and a GLP-1 receptor agonist. A larger group of 141 patients determined to be at intermediate risk were treated with metformin and pioglitazone alone. Both groups also received lifestyle therapy, as did patients who refused pharmacotherapy. At a mean follow-up of 32 months, 5% of the intermediate risk participants and none of the high-risk group developed type 2 diabetes. This compared to progression of diabetes in just over 10% of the approximately 200 participants who received lifestyle therapy alone. That means that the adjusted hazard ratio for progression to type 2 diabetes was 0.29 in people treated with metformin and pioglitazone and 0.12 in those treated with triple therapy. An accompanying editorial stresses that even at the stage of an impaired glucose tolerance, people have typically lost more than 80% of their beta cell function. And the strongest predictor associated with preventing the progression of type 2 diabetes is an improvement in beta cell function. It is worth emphasizing that this study did not receive outside funding and none of the investigators or editorialists reported relevant financial relationships. So is this use of pharmacotherapy appropriate in order to disrupt the pathophysiological mechanism of a disease that, none of us needs to be reminded, is associated with very significant pathology, especially cardiovascular disease? Before we jump on this bandwagon, let's also remember that this was a retrospective observational study, not a randomized trial. Many would consider intervention with three pharmaceutical agents, one of which is an injectable, to be excessive in this population. The argument for pharmacotherapy that targets both insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction is pretty compelling, but this is a big step for both clinicians and patients, as evidenced by the fact that half of the patients in this trial refused to start pharmacotherapy, and not one that can be completely supported with this observational study.